my guest and expert in the jobs to be done theory. Uh, more than 30 years experience he has in marketing, product management and skill development. He's been 18 years uh, by Microsoft and um, with a focus of certification programs, learning programs and marketing. He's got six years of experience as director of product management. He's a guest lecturer at the Rhein Main University of Applied Sciences and since May 2021 he is a founder and managing director of Unipro Solutions and has dedicated his time to jobs to be done theory, uh, which I believe was originally developed by Clayton Christensen, a Harvard Business School professor. The economist termed him the most influential management thinker of his time. Unfortunately, we lost Clayton Christensen for complications of leukemia in 2020. That's a big loss. Uh, four years ago, a few years ago, you, you um, developed the Wheel of Progress canvas and then um, developed a method what you call customer progress design. And this is what we will be talking about today in form of a showcase, uh, finding a care solution for a relative. Now, this is a topic that many of us have dealt with or might have to deal with at some stage. So it's quite interesting, I believe. And I'm excited to hear more about what you were able to find out in the process. And you have also created a standard interview process, which we will come back to at the end of this session. So, Eckhart, welcome. Please join. Yeah. Thank you for the nice introduction, Miko. You're welcome. Uh, I just turn on my camera. I hope you can see me now. Yes. Okay, excellent. Well, f first, thanks for inviting me uh, to do this second session. Uh, months ago, we did another one on creating great value propositions based on uh, valid uh, customer profiles. And uh, this one is a little bit different because it's more about how to create a strategy. And it's not just about how to create a strategy, but how to create a strategy based on uh, on customer data. Because our goal is to develop a strategy that is customer centric and not anything else centric, which really doesn't make sense. So I'm really excited to be here and want, want to thank everyone for attending and um, kind of experiencing this showcase on finding uh, care for an elderly one. So I have uh, a few slides on, um, on just the introduction. Let me first forward to that. So um, first we need to talk about the basics. The basics in this case is uh, the cycle of progress. So how do people make progress in life? Or we also could apply this to a business or how to make progress as a business, but in this case, we're going to focus on on a consumer case uh, and uh, want to experience and, and see how that works. And uh, based on that, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a customer-centric strategy. How do we use the data? And first and foremost, how we create data to make better decisions. And of course, uh, the main body of this presentation is the showcase, finding a care solution for a senior we will also listen in, into one of the interviews. We have some snippets, um, which are quite revealing. And then the last part is going to be about skills, because skills in creating a, a customer-centric strategy is also a, an important topic. We need to understand what kind of skills do we need. And uh, Miko just mentioned the interview technique, which is one of the skills that we need to build um, because it's uh, kind of the creating the foundation for our data. And then we're going to have a Q&A. Okay. Uh, so should... feel, feel free to post any questions to the chat. I will be following that. And if, if there's uh, something urgent that we should discuss at some stage, we can try to fit it in. Please feel free to do so. Okay, let's get started. Uh, just a little bit about myself. Miko introduced me. Already uh, three years ago, I started to, to develop a, a tool called the Wheel of Progress, 
which uh, really served as a foundation for creating a whole process, a methodology on how to create a customer centric uh, strategy. And uh, I did this with a partner at that time, Peter uh, Rochel. Um, both of us are using extensively the tool in our work with the client because it really helps to uh, evaluate uh, customer interviews, how to structure them, and then further on to use the data. So this uh, showcase is about finding a care solution for a senior like uh, Miko mentioned. So we are looking at this relationship between the uh, relative looking for a care solution for an elderly one and the care provider. And there's a lot of pain. Uh, of course, the one, the needy, the one in uh, need of care has pain because it's about him or her uh, kind of leading a, a decent life. But it's certainly also, it's a big issue. There are lots of challenges for the relatives looking for a care solution for their loved one. Um, and in, in many cases, there's a lot of procrastination kind of till the last moment when they urgently need something, they, they, they are waiting with taking the right steps, which is not good. We know all about that. Uh, on, the, on the care provider um, front, of course, they have to deal with people procrastinating. And uh, there are lots of issues taking care of the, of the elderly ones and, and providing them with decent care. Um, and they constantly need to think about how, how can they improve uh, the experience uh, in, in their facility. Um, so this is uh, kind of the, the issue we will look at. Uh, the study was uh, part of a training workshop that I did with, uh, with an American client early in 2021. Um, it was part of that training workshop. So it was a real case. Clients really mind if we expose their data and their findings. So we had to uh, we had to use uh, one that we uh, did uh, as part of a training class. We interviewed three um, people. We're looking for a senior care solution for their, their in one case was a father, was a mother, and uh, and relative um, in law. Um, and the interviews took between forty five minutes to an hour. And there were two interviewers. There was one lead interviewer and the other one in the background asking additional questions. And um, the interviews were located in Southern California and Greater Los Angeles area and Arizona. And in, in, it's kind of surprising that you only had like three interviews, but I think you got a lot out of these three interviews. Is that, is that right? We got, we got a lot out. Uh, we got, um, I, I can show the data later on. We, uh, we count the items and um, got like over 300 elements, uh, how we call it, out of these interviews. Impressive. Okay. So, um, yeah, as I mentioned, we conducted that uh, in January 21. And uh, now we have to look uh, at the basics. So how, uh, how does a customer make progress in, in life? And uh, we as uh, entrepreneurs or as uh, owners of companies, we can think about how can we support that cycle of progress. And it first starts, uh, of course, with a thought that uh, there might be something on the horizon that I need to change. There might be uh, the case that uh, something breaks a little bit, but it's not like too bad that I immediately need to run and fix it. But I see, okay, there could be then some change needed. And then uh, a process starts with, uh, with a passive search. So you're not kind of going immediately to Google and, and look for a solution, but it's more on, in the back of your mind. Okay, eventually I need to change something. And, and then typically another event happens, uh, which we call the first event that really moves you forward, that drives you to do active search. So then you reach out to friends, to Google, and see what is the solution space? How do I even phrase it? How do I name it? How do I find the right products? So the first but, event with this case would be like in an elderly uh, person, uh, you know, something is, you kind of get the feeling that he or she is no longer able to, to uh, 
take care of uh, himself or herself and uh, then, then you start actively uh, thinking about it is it exactly we will we will look at, at some typical events that we found that really drive uh, active search and uh, <clears throat> then when people um, actively search um, they may not buy the product immediately it's also maybe they may procrastinate maybe on the back on, on uh, of their mind but then something else could happen uh, for example they get uh, released uh, the the loved one gets released uh, from hospital uh, and has no place to go really because uh, at home they they cannot take care of themselves they need someone else who takes care of them and then uh, we need to make a decision and we need to make the trade off of course which which solution is the best one which is the most appropriate one which one fits my budget uh, are these quite typical questions who i trust the most and uh, then we uh, we hire a new solution that's kind of jobs to be done language uh, it's a, when when we think about uh, buying uh, we think about hiring something um, it could be also like a do it yourself solution it could be like some kind of a measure, I mean, can, could be anything that can help to change the situation to, to help to solve a customer job. And then uh, the last phase is like the experience when I bought the product uh, or hired a provider, then uh, hopefully I'm happy, I'm satisfied, I'm not going to send it back, I'm not going to change the provider, I'm not going to kind of change back to the old solution. Um, and then I form a new habit and then I'm hopefully happy with a new experience with a new product, so to speak. So now um, as an entrepreneur, as a business, uh, you can really take care of a customer when you deal with all these four phases with passive search, with active search, with trade off is with the experience, of course, uh, you can build value propositions to help people find the right solution. You can uh, create awareness campaigns to make people aware in the first place that they should not procrastinate. Procrastinating is really bad in, in your situation. The longer you wait, the more severe the problem is going gonna, is gonna to be. Um, and the, the question is, how can we specifically use data from our research to... Uh, to manage uh, or to find uh, solutions, uh, messaging, uh, marketing, sales, uh, and the product or service itself, of course, and help keep people make that progress. And so what we build is, um, you can see these four phases, is a canvas. Um, we call this uh, the Wheel of Progress Transmission Canvas because we are using the data as fuel for ideation uh, for all these four phases to come up with, with, with better solutions or ideas for messaging. So we are going to support in the at the top left the passive search with some forms of communications, campaigns, whatsoever. We can help with the active search. We can help with the trade-off decision and experience. Um, and how that's going to look like uh, is like this in how does a customer benefit from each of these quadrants or help with these quadrants? And how are we as a business gonna benefit? So if we help customers become aware of an issue to stop procrastination, we can help them to prevent harm and or regret. It does not always need to be harm, but if like, if I'm in a midlife crisis and I kind of put off a new hobby that I had, that I dreamed of for my whole life, then maybe eventually it's going to be too late and I'm, I'm going to be sorry. And uh, I regret that I didn't kind of learn to ride a motorcycle or whatsoever. You know, um, this is a, would be something that we could help with in the first uh, quadrant, in the first phase of the customer entering um, the, the cycle of progress. In the, in the second quadrant, it would be more aligning the desired outcomes with the right solution. So what's a, what's a appropriate solution space for you? Can we offer kind of an assessment or can we consult customers? 
can we create some curated content with stories how people uh, kind of found a new kind of a new solution uh, how, can we be inspiring uh, change in this uh, quadrant um, that's all, always kind of advertising making people aware of new solutions this is really the um, the quadrant where we start with uh, thinking about solutions the quadrant before the first one is more about it's really more about the issue it's not about the product itself then in the third phase uh, the trade-off phase we can help uh, the customer to get the best value, to create the strongest promise um, and maybe the best offer, you know, based on what we've learned in these interviews. Uh, interviewing people is, is a great tool because we become more intelligent. Um, and when we put together the, the, all the data from all the interviews, we are more, more intelligent about the issue than the customer himself or herself. Uh, in the fourth quadrant, of course, when people use the product, we can help them to improve the daily life. It's That's really what customers uh, focus on, what, what they are interested in, and help me to lead a better life, right? On the business uh, on the business side, help me to create a better business. So this is how the customer would uh, benefit from help in these phases and how we would, uh, as, a, as a business, would benefit. It's like we could start a relationship much earlier than any, anybody else. I think this is a huge advantage when you can reach out to customers, even before they look for a solution. When you just talk with them about, hey, what does it mean if you procrastinate? Um, how can we educate them? And, and uh, we will start a, a, a relationship, I believe, as a, as a trusted advisor, uh, it's, it shouldn't be always kind of so selfish why we do this. It's, it's, it's really customer love. How can we help them avoid any, any kind of mistakes in, in, in the long run? In the second quadrant, uh, our benefit, if we get kind of active in the second quadrant, is like being found as a solution. And we did, for example, uh, interviews with yoga mat buyers for one startup and they told me just because they learned what customers were really looking for, they were able to lower their keyword um, uh, cost in Google by two thirds. It was like just, just amazing, just by knowing what customers were looking for and what they were searching for. And we also could be uh, perceived as a helpful brand if we offer people um, help, assessments, consulting, as I said. Um, because they sometimes they, they really struggle, um, could be very complex as we can see, uh, to manage, uh, kind of the last phase of life of on, uh, a loved one. And, um, then in the third phase, of course, we can provide unprecedented promise. We can, uh, based on our knowledge, we can pay, we can create the most comprehensive, the best offer. We can use our sales people to tell stories, customer stories, how they benefited from the product. Uh, because we, unless we talk with customers about it, we don't know. We don't know how they benefited. So it's a, it's a great help for, for salespeople. Also for like objection handling. We know that people have objections. They have concerns about our products and, and from customer interviews. We can take that, can extract that knowledge put it in here in, in, in the canvas and then create the right messaging, the right solutions to help customers get, getting over the hump to buy the product. And last but not least, in the last uh, quadrant, uh, if we really provide an outstanding service, outstanding products, outstanding experience, we become a, can become a, a love brand. So uh, to make a long story short, if we support customers in, in, in these four like segments of their cycle to make progress. Uh, we do something good for the customer and we can start a relationship early and can do something for ourselves in return uh, because we can help customers move forward. We can start with uh, kind of building loyalty with the customer. We can be the most helpful one. And hopefully we're gonna kind of solve any problems that the customer wants to solve or help them to improve their life. 
So I, 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 something that struck me is that, um, you know, when we go through this process, we don't really need to go and innovate some new product feature or do something else. You know, there are there are simple things that we can fix, uh, like just improve our uh, marketing communication or, or find better keywords. And, you know, the, the, the time and cost that we invest in, in such a process could pay for the for, for it immediately and and of course there are other elements to it that it, it which can lead to uh, longer development periods and so on but there's kind of these low-hanging fruits likely you you'll get uh, something out of it this is my uh, my my opinion um, so I think this is very very interesting yeah it's just uh, just one interview sometimes changes your whole perception of of the space of, of that uh, and, and, and changes your your, uh, your your kind of your body of knowledge yeah. uh, regarding uh, one, one topic. It's uh, you but don't. Let's, let's go ahead. We we are eager to see the case. So uh... <laughs> okay. so yeah. So uh, I'm gonna move move on. Um, maybe the the one thing is you see the gray areas uh, where we can um, put in the data. Uh, we have very specific data from the research that we put in for each of these quadrants. Uh, so there's no wondering anymore. So I go, what data do I need to uh, create? What data need, uh, do I need to put in here? And uh, we are looking really for 12 elements. We call this the 12 elements of customer progress design. We look for, for these so-called customer jobs, pains and gains. So what are the things that people want to do, either to do or to accomplish? And what are associated pains that they have with that, with doing this job, getting this job done, and what are the gains, what do they get out of it? Um, these are kind of three of the elements, and we have, of course, we have some context elements, because we know customer jobs do not exist in, in a vacuum, and we specifically look at, at events, and the marketing folks, they really love events when they know what are the typical events, because they, they can use that data and, and uh, around the events, and, and be there and, and have the right channel, the right messaging, because they know what's going to happen uh, in, in, in people's lives because of these typical events. We also look at constraints, constraints in the sense of what holds you back from making progress. We look at solutions because we want to understand the breadth of solutions that people are hiring. They inform us about the customer jobs. And then we have at the kind of the outer space uh, forces and desires. On the right hand side, we have elements that drive us forward to a new solution, like the push, the pain of the current situation, the pull of the product, and desired outcomes, something in between where I form my mind. On the left hand side, we have things that hold us back, like our habits, our comfort zone. We have anxieties uh, about the new situation, about the product, concerns. Is the product really deliver uh, delivering what's uh, what it's promising? And we have things we want to avoid, right? So we have these opposing forces that create um, a lot of issues. So then, uh, when we understand the cycle of progress, we uh, collect these twelve elements, and then uh, we uh, do this by doing interviews. And we always try to get the story of seeking progress. And we are listening actively for these 12 elements. So there's no basing it on assumptions, kind of, or trying to come up with some kind of personas, making it stuff up. This, is, this doesn't make sense. We really need to extract that from customers. And uh, so, uh, I have an example. Um, we're going to listen in into one of these interviews. There are some snippets, and I hope you can hear some of these 12 elements. Maybe you can hear some events. Maybe you can hear some constraints, some pains. Uh, these were really snippets from the interviews. We, we uh, took part of that project, and uh, it's going to be five minutes, and uh, I think it's very interesting. So that was kind of the, the first place. And it sounds like uh, that decision was predominantly kind of driven by he himself. Yeah, totally. 
little involvement. Uh, did he seek input from I, anyone else? Yeah, he asked me what I thought about it, and I said, well, you got to go somewhere. You know, you can't just, you can't stay in the house. We know that. Uh, and so, you know, you got to just, and, and I, the one thing I was not going to do, knowing my father at that point in his life, was to make the decision for him, which is what he really would have wanted. Because then what happened is if he didn't like it, he would have been blaming. Me. Right. And his, his health at that, at that time, is that steady state or is it declining in any way? It was declining. Um, so it was affecting, he started getting in car accidents, minor ones, but nevertheless car accidents. Um, and frankly, his mental acuity was starting to decline as well. Um, okay. Um, and, and so we just decided, you know what, this is not safe at all. I mean, he had two or three accidents a year. Um, but he had been diagnosed at that point in the early phases of Alzheimer's. Uh, and his vision was going. And because he was always fairly vain, his hearing was also going, but he would not get a um, uh, hearing aid. Because he thought it made him look like an old man. Uh, we got into a situation where he was starting to become a danger to himself. He would shut the stove off, but not entirely. So the flame would go out, the gas would still be coming out. But Lori went over to check on him. And she had a key to his apartment. She went in and smelled gas. And the gas had literally been leaking out of the stove into his apartment. Um, and uh, he didn't realize it. And he had gone to bed and woke up feeling terrible because he was literally breathing gas. He also had what the doctors refer to as he went on the Alzheimer's diet, which is as his cognitive ability got to be less and less, he forgot he would forget to eat. Uh, and so he lost about 30 pounds in, in the course of about two months. Wow. It was at that point when we said, you know, this is, we got to get him out of here. So what 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 kind of ended up being the tipping point where you're now moving to like the next next phase of kind of where he lived? Well, How as they say, when he started dropping all the weight, uh, and at that point in time, we realized you know this if he's not with it enough to realize he's not eating, mm -hmm. this is not good. And he probably, I mean, seriously, he probably would have died within a month. What are you guys? trying to figure out at that point in time as you start to look at alternatives? Well, the first thing we, we looked at is, you know, we wanted to be able to get him in a place where he would not live his money. Mm -hmm. Because with all of the health issues, they were relatively minor in terms of um, compared with, uh, you know, well, let me, let me back up. His health issues, none of them were life-threatening. Right. And so, you know, we had an expectation that he, he was generally pretty healthy and that he would be living quite a few more years. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, we knew how much money he had. And so that was a big consideration was, you know, how long, what would the burn rate basically be? What are you guys trying to figure out at that point in time as you start to look at alternatives? Well, the first thing we, we looked at is, you know, we wanted to be able to get him in a place where he would not live his money. Mm -hmm. Because with all of the health issues that oh. were relatively minor in terms of um, compared with, uh, you know, well, let me, let me back up. His health issues, none of them were life threatening. Right. And so, you know, we had an expectation that he, he was generally pretty healthy and that he would be living quite a few more years. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, we knew how much money he had. And so that was a big consideration was how long, what would the burn rate basically be? Um, the people in La Crescenta said, you know, um, you know, we, we understand that cost can be an issue and we're, we have a lot of vacancy right now, so we're going to lower our price for you. And they really made it hard to say no. Uh, 
at a very nice facility, very well regarded, very well reviewed. People liked the food. It was the type of place. The the place in Glendale, they had, you know, okay, we're going to feed you, and here's what you're eating today. The place in La Crescenta, they actually had a menu where you could pick among two or three things on the menu each, for each meal. So it made it, and he, he was the type of person who always liked to go out to eat, go to restaurants. So it gave a little bit more of that flair or that feel to it. And as a result, it um, it just seemed to be a better fit for him. So that was kind of the, the first place. And it sounds like uh, that decision was predominantly kind of driven by he himself. Yes, totally. Little, little involvement. Uh, did he seek input from I, anyone else? or did that? Yeah, he asked me what I thought about it. So, after that, I... Uh, there was a kind of a duplication of the content. I'm going to um, start back up the, the presentation. So as you can see, the uh, the process of um, finding care is, is very complicated. There are a lot of personal issues involved. Um, there are a lot of decisions that need to be made. Uh, it's always kind of not very clear what when do we need to take this next step? How long can we wait? Um, so it, it is very complicated and uh, we have a tool that's called the Wheel of Progress that we need, that we use to capture all the information from the interviews. You can see, see this on, on the next screen. And that helps us really to structure the interviews and, and, and use the data for decision making. So in, in practice, it looks like this. We uh, look at the, the cycle of progress. We document the interview. We put it into the last canvas and then we create the ideas. So um, I'm going to skip this. I uh, just wanted to show you this is uh, uh, the canvas uh, that we built in Mural uh, as a tool uh, to process the data, to capture it. Um, and it uh, starts from kind of creating the project scope to uh, the last step where we develop the strategy um, using the data. And uh, I'm going to switch over. Just uh, bear with me in a second. Uh, I'm going to switch to uh, the canvas, and then we can take a look at the specifics of the example. So while you while you um, looking for it, um, let me let me think that I, I think the the key here. In, in the process seems to be for me to to ask good questions also so so it's so how how do you enable or or how how can people learn how to ask uh, good, good questions how how does that work exactly it's a so we need a, a certain set of questions that help us to find the 12 elements and we need listening skills, uh, in particular, to, to listen for uh, these items because we need to decide um, whether something is a, is, a, is, a, is a pain, is a gain, is an event, uh, is a constraint, uh, is a customer job. And that's not, not always obvious. Uh, so we need to be trained about that. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. With a, with a mural. Yeah, it's, it's rather small, but... Um, no. Yeah, it's an so entire, kind of, <laughs> entire, uh, entire process. So uh, the first thing that you may notice is that uh, we have, like, uh, in the second step, six wheels of progress, and we did three interviews. And uh, I'm, I'm going to give you the, the, the reason for that, uh, because uh, the guy that we just uh, heard in the interview, he uh, talked about four cycles of making progress, not just one. Uh, we asked him about the, the, the most recent one, but he kind of went back into the past and we discovered there were like four discrete cycles that he went through. So that's why we created out of the one interview, four cycles of progress and you can see a total of six. So let's dive in. Let's see how we're going to start with the process of, uh, of uh, creating the data. We always start with making uh, kind of assumptions about the customer jobs, the pains and gains. Uh, in this case, uh, our hypothesis is, or starting point is like getting a care solution in place 
for an elderly parent, relative, or in-law. And then, kind of based on our own, own experience, what is uh, kind of the benefit when we do this right, when, uh, when it's going well, what also could be painful. Uh, we heard about kind of the fear of running out of money. Uh, it could be just a burden for a few family members because they are the most trusted ones, they are most engaged. Um, and uh, the fear that the, the parent is not treated as a, as a unique human being. They also try uh, to uh, think about what could be constraints that we know that help, that, that are in the way of making progress. What are possible solutions? Uh, because the possible solutions we're going to use to recruit uh, specifically for the interviews. And we also uh, try to think about, uh, again, based on our own experience, what uh, could be events that are driving people to make progress. Uh, the solutions that I mentioned, uh, we're going to use to uh, as a basis for uh, recruiting interviewees. Uh, so we reach out to people who kind of hired home care or assisted living home or whatsoever. And then we use some additional criteria because we want to create some um, some breadth uh, and um, in, in diversity on different views, uh, geography, relationship status, and uh, gender as uh, criteria for uh, recruiting our our people for the interviews. Uh, and then we use um, this data to hire people, and then we create these interviewee uh, profiles. Um, and then we know, okay, we have diversity, uh, we have the right people, because it's kind of, if you do it not right, the recruitment, then you may have kind of a lopsided uh, response and the data may be just skewed, uh, which you don't want. Uh, here we built the interview schedule. We did these uh, in January of last year, as I said. Um, and then we conducted the interviews and uh, used this board to uh, to document the interviews. And as you can see, we have a color code. Uh, we have different colors for different uh, elements. We use like green and red for like uh, positive and negative feelings, uh, thoughts and feelings. We have an, in blue like events. Um, so first thoughts, uh, first event, uh, it's all, it's all blue. Uh, we use, uh, as constraints, uh, pink, as you can see. So these are things that make progress difficult. Um, we have solutions. This is a bad example because it's, was one of the interviews that we uh, put out of the massive interview and here are some more solutions uh, someone hired, as you can see. So different solutions. Uh, we have in yellow the customer jobs and I'm gonna talk more about these uh, when we talk about aggregation. Uh, customer jobs along with the gains and the pains, as you can see. So this was uh, kind of the, the wheel of progress in a nutshell. It's a little bit more complicated, um, but it really helps uh, to, uh, to, to gather the data and to structure it uh, for the next step, uh, which is the aggregation. And I wanna start with uh, building a customer, uh, customer job map. Uh, which is super important because we need to understand what are all the things that people need to accomplish uh, up down to the task level. And as you can see in the square boxes, um, we we have the single items and then we paraphrase them, we summarize them and building a hierarchy of customer jobs. Um, and there are some great questions that you can ask um, to help you uh, determining is it is it kind of a, a higher level or lower level job is like going up. We ask the question why, and uh, going down we ask the, the question how. 
So it becomes more task oriented, the kind of lower you go in the, in the hierarchy. And uh, we do have hiring jobs. Uh, in this case, finding care, hiring jobs are, I would say, at least uh, as important as kind of the post hiring jobs when people um, really uh, are covering the face where people are taken care of in, uh, in a facility and uh, kind of the main job is here like uh, extend a relative's life uh, and physically, mentally, all these things. And the, the, the most revealing and surprising thing is when you do these, when you create these job maps is that you realize after pondering about it, what is kind of the, the purpose of all of this is like you can reframe it uh, at like the 30,000 uh, feet level. Uh, we call this a drop at the highest altitude. And in this case, we, we started with the hypothesis, okay, um, the main job is finding care, but um, after we thought about it, we realized it's ensuring a senior relative lives in dignity during the last phase of life, which has a different meaning. So I'm gonna stop for just a second, see if there are any questions or comments Nothing, nothing coming from uh, <clears throat> from there. But uh, is is the the last thing that you said that the the job at the highest altitude is that that that's kind of a um, is that the value uh, proposition statement that could, could or what what is it also? Yeah, it could could also um, feed uh, the 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 it's, it's like the customer job at the highest level. If if you do this right. You know, you were successful, you know, and but it has many elements, uh, starting with uh, hiring the right solution, as we can see, uh, but also performing at the kind of doing it level. I mean, uh, realizing a care that is uh, provides this dignity during the last phase of life, of course. Um, so it is complex um, and we're not always kind of we, we want to keep this in mind because this is what the client wants. This is what the customer wants, wants to achieve. Uh, but we may only like uh, apply for a subset of these jobs, maybe just one cluster, um, maybe helping people to find the right facility. And we know there could be business models just based on helping people find the right solution. You know, there are lots of portals that, that do this but this is a this is kind of at the top level and then uh, we built them back into uh, aggregated jobs with their associated uh, gains and pains so here we uh, we have this cluster of customer jobs uh, with uh, pains and gains and then we have a kind of a, we know what the landscape is of of these customer jobs but since we want to create data that we can rely on, we do this aggregation uh, also with all other items. I mean, what, what's a case collecting all this data if you don't consolidate it, if you don't turn it into data? And we can see kind of the main uh, point in uh, the first thought is like beginning signs of dementia, which could have a lot of uh, expressions, uh, but they all pay uh, into this thing of, uh, yeah, there are some beginning signs of dementia. And uh, same is true for um, the first events, like little accidents, uh, not being able to take care of um, himself. Uh, and then things that are really, uh, when things get worse, uh, they are really push creating, like uh, health condition getting uh, worse. And as we heard in the interview, also the drop in body weight, those kinds of things. And then we, you really start to worry. And uh, there could be also some uh, events driving the sale, driving uh, acquisition of, of a new solution. As you can see, we, we copy all the data from the wheels of progress. We paraphrase it. Uh, we sort it. Um, and uh, then we have data that we can work with. So we have all this data, uh, which also needs to be prioritized. And we do this at the job level. 
we have uh, criteria that we use, uh, like how important is this job? How tangible is it? Can you feel it uh, here and now? Uh, can you see the uh, feel the pain? Can you see the gain maybe? So is it really present? Uh, how satisfied are people with their solution? Um, and how lucrative could be applying for this job for us as a business? So could there be lots of people uh, paying maybe a little bit? Could there be just a few paying a lot? So what's the business model? Is it is it really interesting for us? And then we can, we can summarize it and create uh, like a rank order of uh, customer jobs. Um, and uh, here in, in this case, there were my colleague and I uh, assessing these uh, customer jobs and then um, building the sum and then uh, putting them in order. And we can see at the bottom, um, there could be jobs that are not that interesting to us and at the higher um, at, the, at the top of that list, there could be jobs that uh, could be really crucial and interesting for us as a business. So here we have guidance, what we need to build in terms of uh, product or services that help to satisfy these customer jobs. And then we copy over uh, not all the data, but uh, for sure the, the jobs that we uh, identified as high value and uh, some of the other items. Um, and then we can uh, ideate, for example, the first quadrant. Uh, how can we make people aware, maybe with an advertising campaign, maybe going to the doctor and uh, putting out some articles, uh, how bad it would be to procrastinate and, and those kind of things. And for each of these quadrants, we can do this. Um, also, in, in the second one, we thought about we could create some kind of a sunset live phase planning software, really um, help people to put together all the kind of things that they need to do to prepare for um, a situation where they need to find uh, care, uh, taking care of the finances, uh, making sure the right people are involved. Um, uh, it's like a checklist. Uh, in the third quarter, we thought about maybe creating a, a care finder platform. It's like uh, supporting the, the trade-off process. And in the last one, I'm going to switch quickly over because we are um, kind of time-wise, we need to uh, finish this exercise. Uh, we thought about what's really important here. Uh, what do we want to accomplish for the customer? Of course, ensuring the senior relative lives in, in dignity. Uh, it's also about extending life, it's um, well-being, those kinds of things. Um, so maybe we can help this, uh, these customer jobs with giving the residents of a care facility um, a, a sense of purpose, the feeling of being needed, uh, could be kind of gardening, nursing, babies, uh, stuff like that. And we, then we look for examples. And indeed, we found some examples like here um, in Vancouver, where they combined uh, an orphanage with a nursing home and uh, the, the uh, seniors take care of the babies. The babies get parental love for the last, first time in their life. Or maybe the nun in a, in a monastery where they um, they uh, they are do gardening, they harvest, they eat their their own food. They're really happy. Um, they're stimulated. They just kind of don't sit for the kind of big screen TV for the whole day and getting disconnected. Uh, so this is uh, what how we look at uh, customer centric strategy development. Um, very practically, it's very kind of very tangible, uh, it's data-based, uh, it's using the right data uh, for the right decision, so to speak. And um, if you have any questions, then I'm going to switch back. I think uh, it's fascinating, fascinating to see, like, uh, like uh, we, we said that there was only three people that were interviewed and uh, you see what what kind of massive uh, amount of data is coming out and what kind of 
possibilities uh, you get out of it that it's kind of it really fascinates me it was absolutely fascinating uh, i mean how much you can learn by just doing three interviews uh, it totally mm. changed our perspective on what do people really want to accomplish these yeah. are things that people cannot articulate they don't speak it out in, in interviews you have to uh, you have to, to to look at the data and really make up your own mind what what people want to accomplish because they they do it uh, unconsciously and you uh, you learn from it and you can articulate it uh. so um, how to take advantage of uh, this kind of uh, process uh, very immediately um, as Miko mentioned uh, you can create uh, messaging you can create uh, you can change your keywords uh, can change your sales pitch they're very technical uh, or tactical things that you can do using this data um, these are kind of really low-hanging fruit you don't need to develop any new feature any new product it's just working with this data of course in the in the midterm uh, this should have an impact on new features on new products maybe on strategic partnerships, who could you partner with to uh, apply for customer jobs, uh, just putting it together, you know, uh, as a solution that could be tremendously helpful. And also in the long term, when you think more strategically, what you could do is uh, building, sorry, we're going to go back, uh, building uh, uh, a solution portfolio, you know, it's kind of like, like uh, the car manufacturers where, they provide cars for very entry level for the beginners, maybe the first time car buyers. Then when they grow up and have families and kids, uh, they need a bigger car. Maybe they upgrade to a van and then they have like uh, when, the, when the kids out of, I don't know, out of school, um, then maybe they buy a convertible because they want to enjoy life and you know, whatsoever. But they build a portfolio to help people cycle through life, making progress at each stage where they feel they want to make kind of an upgrade. They want to um, make progress. So um, this is how you could benefit this. And now we need to talk about how to get into progress, customer progress design. Um, also, I need needed to apply this, so I created uh, a different offers. Um, uh, there's an offer is the uh, kind of learn from observing. So uh, just observing an interview where uh, you bring someone to be interviewed. Um, there's a little introduction into kind of the methodology, uh, then the execution of the interview and then evaluation on, on a wheel of progress. So you could see how this works. Um, of course, there are some other uh, offers as well uh, when you want to acquire the skills. Um, or an organization of up to five people. There's a standard offer where we do together a uh, two and a half day uh, in class or five day remote uh, training class on customer progress design, including everything, practice interviews and so on. Um, then there are organizations that just have a project, want to outsource it. Uh, this is also something I can do with a, with a colleague of mine uh, who's certified running a whole project. Um, and of, of course, anything can be can be customized uh, that deviates from a standard offer. And uh, also there's gonna be a practitioner certification, especially when you're kind of in, in a consulting company, when it, do you wanna use uh, this process, this method? Uh, we need to really make sure that um, the skills are avail uh, available to you uh, you, have, you have enough practice, you have enough experience, you can do it like like uh, like a pro, so to speak. Uh, that's gonna come soon. I'm gonna show you. Can you can you shortly go back? I have a I have a question to the, sure. the previous slide. So if we take the, the example that you you showed uh, about the elderly care, where would where would that kind of project like fit into this this offering? In, in this uh, in this case, it was uh, as part of a um, training workshop, so it would be learn and research. Uh, I stopped doing just workshops because, I mean, you learn some skills and some knowledge 
in a workshop, but not the practical part. And you and, and this is really where it gets kind of crucial is getting the experience, getting coaching, uh, because it looks maybe easy on paper uh, to do the interviews, to evaluate interviews, to aggregate it. I'm going to show on the next slide what the skill set is. Uh, it's, a, it's a generalist skill set. And uh, that is, uh, is kind of, you need someone who helps you to acquire that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. So my, my, my kind of straight reaction to this is that you know, the, the case that you show us how much information we can get out of there, even, you know, if I look at the, the more expensive offerings here, it's it's a small investment for, <laughs> and you get, you get a lot of value uh, for your money. So I, I think this this uh, this is really interesting. Yeah, on, on average, we get uh, 113 items or elements out of each interview. So when you do like just eight interviews, you have like, uh, you can end up at like a thousand items, which is uh, real data. I mean, we we aggregate it and then we harden the data. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's very kind of very helpful. And um, just to let you know that um, if you're interested in becoming certified, that's a, a certified customer progress designer. And of course, it has to do with uh, orchestration, moderation. You moderate the whole process. You're kind of the, the guy in charge of it. Uh, there are all these uh, skills necessary. I'm going to let them fly in. Um, it's a very diverse set of skills uh, from like analytical uh, uh, skills, from interviewing skills, also being able to uh, ab abstract uh, facts uh to articulate uh those in in statements also entrepreneurial thinking it would be i would say something that is very related to uh like a chief customer officer or in some cases also product managers uh sometimes are in these jobs and they typically pull in like the experts people can can help with the with the interviews they can aggregate uh people who have to aggregate it so pulling in different skill sets. Also, in the last phase, it would be like creative people who can come up with uh, lots of ideas how to solve uh, for these customer jobs and um, all the, those kinds of things. So as you can see, um, it's, a, it's a great skill set. I believe this is a great skill set for the future where uh, you can really uh, practically help people to become more customer-centric and not just use it as a as a buzzword, uh, so make it, it real. The process looks like this to become certified. Um, it would be taking uh, the learn and research offer, so getting some experience under, under your belt, then uh, leading a project under supervision and coaching, and then getting certified. It's like this, it's, there's no certification exam. It's just uh, me coaching through the process and giving tips and, and so on. And we, we, we don't want to leave you there. Uh, if you're interested in kind of getting into customer progress design, uh, Miko and I, we thought about what can we offer <laughs> for, for anyone um, interested in, and, and you know, the entry offer is like doing this joint interview. Uh, and we have a two week sale, uh, the regular price is like 395, uh, but until, uh, mid of July, it's going to be 350. So you're going to save like 10% roundabout. And uh, the workshop needs to be completed by end of September. So we have a, like a quarter of a year, three months to do the interview. Um, so there's no pressure to have the interviewee uh, right there. You can think about a project and can try it out. I think that's, that's the main benefit. To try so, so how could if, if somebody would be interested now and this could also um come a case for those who come for the replay um uh, you know so so how, how can you get this uh just just send me an email and say uh hey i'm i'm interested can i buy this and then i'm gonna issue the invoice uh and then we okay can and what is the email address yeah, it's my email address. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it's... Yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit. Um, 
behind behind that um, image. That's why I was saying. So maybe yeah. you can type it into the chat, or I can type it uh, so that we, we we have it available. But uh, I'm sure yeah. people people will find you uh, or or me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, if if you want it, um, I could get your email. Well, I got it. You got it. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If you need more information, just go to my website. Um, also have a um, YouTube channel, and uh, we are up uh, at six o'clock. But I'm going to stay on for any questions. <clears throat> are there any questions? Okay. No. No. As I say, not, not at the moment, but uh, like I said, there's going to be a replay, which will go out to be available tomorrow. And if uh, somebody is watching this as a, as a replay, um, you know, please uh, go ahead and um, contact one of us. Uh, actually, I just uh, realized that I forgot to introduce myself. I'm <laughs> Mikko Manila. I'm the founder of Statis. Uh, I kind of ex always assume that everybody knows who I am, but uh, you know, never know. Could could be that some people would also uh, join join these sessions and they don't even know who I am. So maybe we, I need to change that and <laughs> make make a little introduction of myself in the beginning as well. Um, right. But um, I'd like to kind of what 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 stuck to me is is a lot of lot of things that stuck to me. I I liked. Very much the, um, the, the 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 kind of the, the what came out of this was that there are so some long uh, low hanging fruits like the the marketing message which we can improve the keywords we can use the sales bits we can improve so the marketing and, and sales could easily easily from this kind of a, a, a workshop um, create uh, an immediate effect that could have a um, effect on the bottom line and what i'm a big fan of uh, also is is strategic partnership so you know you could if you are an elderly uh, care home you could you know reach out for kindergarten or <laughs> or the nuns or whatever you have available and try to figure out some common uh, offering and, and then, of course, the long term thing is building a, po a solution portfolio, um, you know, that, that takes then a lot of that might take months and years to develop that. But uh, also those uh, would likely come out of this. And and one one other thing that came out for me, because I'm, I'm always thinking in terms of business models, is that, you know, something that came out of here is that maybe there's there's room for special uh, consultants that are kind of between the the uh, the family looking for the care and then the um, the elderly uh, home offerings because it might be that you you will not find the exact match right there where you expect it to be but it could be that somebody specializes in um, in matching those helping to match them uh, really so that you know, it could be a little bit further away or even completely on the other side of the country. Uh, who knows? But if it's a good match, uh, it could make sense. So all kind of things coming out of this. I, I find it really, really, really interested. Thank you. Ebert. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here. And uh, if you have any questions, let us know, either Miko or me. And... Uh, I hope we could inspire you uh, with a new methodology and, and really thinking about how can we use data, how can you use data for making better decisions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Egad. Bye now. Bye.